12 tournaments make up the Super Series, and this is event number three, and the first ever premier event in Europe. Of course, for the first time ever of the 12, pre of the 12 Super Series tournaments, five have been promoted to the status of Premier. The Korean Open, which was the last of the Super Series events, now the All England, the first ever, as I say, in Europe. The Indonesian Open, the Danish Open, and the China Open as well. I'm Jill Clark, sitting alongside Ian Wright, and of course, Ian, we've got uh, plenty to look forward to in this evening's play, quarterfinals evening, and it always creates a great atmosphere here in Birmingham. Yes, we've got some great matches tonight, Jill. Crowd starting to build up, looks as though I know the ticket sales are very strong for tonight, so I think we'll get a good atmosphere to go along with some great badminton. Well, talking of our lineup for this evening's play, we've got five matches for you, five quarterfinals, and what a lineup it is. We've got the former champions in the mixed doubles, in the men's doubles, Kuki Ankiat and Tanbun Hyong up against the reigning Olympic champions, Marcus Kido and Hendra Setioan. Then we've got mixed doubles and Tao and Tian, finalists in the last two Super Series events earlier this year up against the pair from Thailand, Sukhet Prakamol and Sarali Thong Tongkan. Then we've got women, women's doubles and the world number ones, Chen Wen Sing and Chen Yu Chin of Taipei trying to reach their first ever All England semi-final. Then women's singles and the Commonwealth Games gold medalist Saina Nawal of India are up against the Japanese star Eureko Hirose. And then the last of our five quarterfinals this evening, it's the reigning European champion Peter Gaeta up against Chen Long of China. Well, let's go down courtside and join our MC Howard Bentham. It's the Yonex All England Open Badminton Championships here at Birmingham's National Indoor Arena. It's quarterfinals day. Please welcome in the men's doubles, the number five seeds from Malaysia, Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Boon The Malaysian superstars. Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong, winners the first time they played the All England as a pair back in 2007. Number one seeds last year, but fell at the very first hurdle. And their opponents from Indonesia, the number four seeds, Marcus Kino. The reigning Olympic champions, Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiawan of Indonesia. Former world champions, of course, but this is the only major title that has eluded them so far. Spear, the umpire for the first of our quarterfinals. And the service judge is Dave Hinton. And the court officials just come back to the toss of the coin. So what a way to get our evening's play. The former champions against the Olympic champions. Men's doubles, probably the most dynamic and exciting of all disciplines in badminton. So the left-hander, Tan Boon Hyong, and his partner, Ku Kian Kiat, they're the number five seeds this year. They've got a world ranking of five, having played 15 tournaments 
And as I say, they were the winners back in 2007, but last year as number one seeds, they lost in the very first round to the Danish combination of Jonas Rasmussen and Lars Borska, who of course went on to take the title. Now their win-loss record for the year translates into two semi-finals, the Korean Open and the German Open last week. And in both those tournaments, they lost to the Korean pairing of Jong Jae Sung and Lee Yong Dae. Well, the Malaysians, I can tell you, in the first round of the main draw, had to play against qualifiers. Vitaly Dorkin and Alexander Nikolayenko. Two straight games, they won that match, and then yesterday against Chen Hong Ling and Lin Yu Lang of Taipei won on their second match point in the second game, coming through 21 10, 22 20. So to the Olympic champions, both Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiawan, 26 years of age, the number four seeds this year but not a very impressive win-loss record for the year. They won their first round match in Korea, despite the fact that they were the number three seeds and expected to go through to the semi-final. They also played in the Super Series finals, uh, left over from the Super Series of 2010, but played earlier this year, and they ended up fourth in that group. Well, they too have had tough first two matches so though both of those won in two straight games but in the first round against the qualifiers Chang Peng Soon and Lim Kim Wa of Malaysia 21 10 25 23 in that second game they had to save three game points and then yesterday against Hashimoto and Hirata of Japan much more comfortable 21 14 21 13 so there's Ian Spear our umpire for this horse first quarter final and Dave Hinton his service judge Marcus <coughs> so the former champions from Malaysia Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Boon Hong who won this title at their first attempt as a pair winning in 2007 but my goodness last year what a disappointment for the Malaysians the number one seeds of course 12 months ago but lost in the first round to Jonas Rasmussen and Lars Borska of Denmark who went on to take the title well they're up against the reigning Olympic champions former world champions current Asian Games gold medalist Marcus Kido Ladies and gentlemen and on my right Marcus Kido Hendra Setawa Indonesia On my left, Cool King Kit, Tan Boon Dong, Malaysia. Cool King Kit to serve to Marcus Kiddo, La Ball, play. Well, on paper, this should be an absolute classic One match. Plus. Two of the most exciting dynamic pairs in world badminton. But as far as the Indonesians are concerned, this is the one major title that's eluded them so far. And they are a pair in that struggle with their consistency of late. We can see both the Indonesians with strapping on their knees. They've had their injury problems, but their form does waver a little bit. I think it would be fair to say, Jill, that both oh. pairs have had that problem this year so far. Both of these That's pairs have been quite inconsistent. Oh. Both of them, of course, have touched the top spot in the world rankings over the last 12 months, so they're actually a little bit on the slide, you would say, both of them in world ranking terms. Well, of course, the last time that these two pairs met Three, against each other two. was in the final of the Asian Games in Guangzhou. Of course, the Malaysians were the defending champions of that Asian Games title. They had 
match points in the second game to retain their title. Blame. And Bird, it really was a thrilling match. Both you and I watched that. There's the injury problem that's been so devastating of late. So uh, him and Bar set the one. Three, four. But he was saying before the tournament, Ian, that he's playing now without pain, so all that strapping is just precaution, I think, really. Yes, there was some doubt, apparently, at one point, he considered whether he was going to play two events, Sam because Sama. he's recently started a new Five, mixed combination as well, and three. he's actually through to the quarterfinals in, in the mixed event as well. So he said in the end, the last couple of weeks, he's been pain-free and confident to come into the two events, so that's, it's good to see him back. Smash just long Six, of that back line. Three. Service over. Now both these pairs do have Four, a favoured formation, don't they? There's the left-hander who's got such a powerful smash. He likes to go to the back of the court as much as possible, allowing Kuki and Kiat to use his anticipation Five, and speed at the front six. of the court and likewise for the Indonesians it's Hindra Setiawan's reading of the game at the front that is so devastating yes and certainly that epic final in the final of the Asian championships sorry the Asian games um, that was the battle that was the feature of the match it was six, it was Ku four. against Setiawan who could get control of that front court who could create the opportunities in attack for their partners and it was a tremendous battle and a great spectacle to watch Well, we always get a number of Malaysian fans here in Birmingham. Oh. Well, along with the back line. Seven, 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 six. Oh, that's a super return of serve. Great use of Seven, the mid-court area, four. pushing the shuttle past the net player, making it land in front of the rear court player. It's an ideal tactic for doubles. It is, and I think it's something we'll see quite a lot of tonight when Ku's serving, that they'll try and push past him to not let him take that third shot in the front court and get control of the front court. Just as Sepio one did on that occasion. Eight, seven. There's the interception, the third shot that you were talking about. Yeah, very noticeable. They're already pushing past Ku, trying to put the pressure on Tan on the mid-court position below net height. And there's that powerful smash from Tan Boon Hyong. Eight, four. Yeah, great time. It's not just the power deal, it's the angle, it's the placement. That's what he's improved over the last sort of 18 months or so. He's always hit very hard, but now... Now it's very well directed with much better angle. Nine, eight. Yeah. Seven, seven. Nine, Almost four. The Indonesian players now competing independently of their national federation. Over. 10 9. 11 9 interval. So the Malaysians to the mid game interval with a two point advantage. And as so often in men's doubles nowadays, Ian, some of the rallies so short. Yes, particularly in this match, I think it's it's quite normal that there's a lot of sort of feeling out of the serve and return and placement of the returns of serve. Both pairs, are, as you say, Jill, have got a favoured formation. Tanken Hur, former English national men's doubles coach there, in the Malaysian pair. As I say, they both look for this favoured formation. And sometimes when when pairs are 
looking for that setup play. They, they take time to find their way tactically as to how they're going to work that out in different matches. Marvel Amazing is taking all of their allotted time out. 11-9, play. Nicely done. 12, 9. Yes, and that's what you can't do against Koo. That short return, he's so quick onto that. Great touch around the net. Always looking to dominate that area. Oh. 13, 9. Lexi Manneke on the left, the amazing coach, of course, used to play. As a player for Indonesia, former Northern Olympic champion and all the champion as well. Well, there's more, certainly more of the attacking play than the player from 14, Malaysia. 10. Yes, we've seen this on several occasions recently, the Indonesian pair starting quite slowly and quite passive. Not really looking to get in and compete on the net area at the moment. Happy to push through and the Malaysian pair able to take the attacking opportunities at the moment. Oh, that's lovely. Wonderful defensive shot from Tanbun Hyong. For the world junior champion. Turn on that title back in 2004. With Hun Tian Hao. And once again, very short rally. Service over. 11 15. It really is all a question at the moment is which pair can get 14, on the attack and whichever pair 15. does so first is winning the rally. <laughs> oh, that's landed in. Yes, quite unusual for these days. We've not really seen any fast flat exchanges yet. Both pairs. I'm sure both pairs know the strengths of their opponents so well, and there's a lot of pushes to the midcourt, just probing play, trying to get the attack. This game's really not taken off yet. Oh, that was clever placement once again on the defensive shot from the left hander. 17, Saw the gap deep in the backhand corner. There's a little hand signal to his partner, letting him know where he's going to serve to. That was a real missed opportunity from Hendra Setiawan. 18-14. Yeah, it's very interesting, Jill. We've seen a lot of blocks so far in this game, and one of the features of the final in the Asian Games was the fast, fat, flat play of both pairs trying to dominate, push their opponents away from the net, drive them off the net. And here there's a lot more blocked play and pace off play. And at the moment, it's 19, the Indonesians that are struggling 14. with the rhythm of that game. Four straight points to take the Malaysians to within two points of this opening game. Oh, that's a great interception. That's what Seti Owan does best. Yeah, classic combination. The smash from Kiddo in the rear court, setting up his partner in the forecourt. Great angle. Not trying to hit it too hard, making sure he brings it down steeply. Sixteen, 
king. And that's the danger for the Malaysian pair. If they do relax a little bit and start to use that drive in defense, Seti Wan reads it so well, and that's two quick points when he gets in on that net position. change of pace on the smash there. Neither pair really being able to find the rhythm in any department really of their game, certainly on defensive play. Uh, good interception. Yes, this time it's the Malaysian pair getting into their favoured formation. Turn in the rear court. Ku quick to intercept on that mid court. Some three game points to the Malaysians. Oh. Yeah, that's one well Sasola. saved. Good return of serve. 18, 20. 19, 20. Again, the Malaysians looking for that block to the net put pace on but this time it was a mistake and then this time they convert third time of asking opening game 21 19 to the former champions Kukin Kiat and Tan Boon Hyun coach is happy with that and so they should be so confirmation of the opening game to Kukin Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong, 21 19. So, favours this, he likes to concentrate on one player and. Him her, he's talking to Koo. Yeah, if you see, it's the Malaysians that have created the most, the most attacking opportunities. They've hit the most overhead winners. Very, very interesting from both pairs. Not one flick service, and that's very strange these days. And certainly for the Malaysians, in the uh, last couple of times they've played this Indonesian pair, they've had a lot of success with the flick serve against Marcus Kiddo. So the Malaysian Four coaches two, are really very seconds. happy with their players. Rexy Manike getting very animated and encouraging his players on. And two minute timeout. Copious notes being written. Second game. Yes, I think he'd be happy, very happy with the first game because I actually don't think Ku and Tan are, are anywhere near their top form in that first game, but they've won, won the set and. Uh, it's got to be a very positive Level thing. I think from the Indonesian play. perspective, they've got to be looking to put a little bit more pace into the game to get, find some rhythm because at the moment they're making a lot of mistakes One from below net height, from the push play and the block play of the Malaysian pair. Oh. Yes, that's well taken. Great effort from the left hand up, Tan Boon Hyong to reach out and take it. this one as early as possible. Very good play. Yeah, but again, not great thinking from the Indonesians. Left-handed, they've played him enough times. Just pushing it up on his forehand side, that's always going to be dangerous. One, two. Uh, well, when Seti Two, one starts reading four. things at the front of the court, he really is one of the best in the world, if not the best in. Yes, it was interesting there, Kiddo using a slightly fatter sm fatter, flatter smash to encourage the flat return for Seti Yuan to take that interception. So 
Sometimes I think that Marcus Kido is a little bit lazy on defence. Is that a fair two. comment? In defence, when there's no pace on the shuttle, he tends to get a little bit static. His feet tend to stop when there's pace in the game and pace in the rallies. He's hitting and he's moving, but when opponents take the pace off, he does struggle. He sometimes gets a little bit lost on the court. Now we're seeing it. Seti when trying to put pace on, but his partner unable able to cope in the net position. That's not the favoured position. Seti one pace on, and we can see Kiddo's racket very low there, unable to react to the interception opportunity on the forecourt. Um, getting onto the less favoured forehand wing in that centre defence position there, making sure his partner's in good position on the net. is very laid back at the front of the court as Marcus Guido he doesn't seem to have the same threat his racket down by his side there and by the time he's got his racket up to intercept it he's just too late onto it absolutely right Jill racket too low there and Ku just pushing and probing not, not over committing on that net position just making sure he keeps the shuttle below net height seven two Oh, this is only going away from the Indonesians a little too quickly. But all credit to the Malaysians because they have made the big effort to take the shuttle as early as possible, looking for the opportunities, but not always pace. No, I think it's the pace off's been the key here, Jill, that they've been, the legs are working well, they're taking the shuttle early, but they're not forcing the play, they're blocking it off. Being patient with the attack, and the Indonesians aren't coping with it at the moment. Now you see, as soon as the pace goes on, that suits the Indonesian pair. That fast flat exchange, and there you see Kido move quickly because there's pace on the shuttle, and that's what he likes. Well, there was me saying at the start of the match that it's Kuki and Kiat that first to go forward but I have to say the left-hander really has improved considerably at the front of the court he's got far more confidence now yes I know it's something Rexy talked about after the uh, Asian Games that it was one of the target Nine, areas that they needed three. to develop if they were going to go on towards their Olympic goal and he's certainly showing signs of improvement in that area and a nice return from Marcus Kido The area where I think Tan's improved a lot, Jill, is he's not trying to hit the shuttle hard all the time anymore. He's starting to mix the pace up, and that makes his hard smash more effective for me. Ten, four. Yes, he's already hit one smash in today's quarterfinal at 2.59. That's just under 162 miles per hour. And you compare that with the fastest ever tennis serve, Ivo Karlovic, last weekend in the Davis Cup. It's the fastest ever tennis serve at 251 kilometers an hour. Another example. Their pace off from the rear court, looking for the angle. The Indonesians trying to force the play and hitting the shuttle firmly from below net height, therefore the trajectory is upwards. Easy interception for the Malaysians. I have to say, I really wasn't expecting this sort of match prior to the quarterfinals. I mean, there's seven-point advantage having won the first game. Here's seven-point advantage in the second. And the Indonesians don't really seem to have got into the match at all. I think it was a very difficult game to call, Joe. Both, both pairs have uh, shown signs of lack of confidence in the last couple of tournaments. And um, today, it's in Indonesia really struggling to react tactically to the Malaysians playing with a little bit of more pace off and control and some patience. I think they were expecting a quicker faster game and they've been caught by surprise and they're not adapting very well to it 
Oh, that was good judgment. Letting it drop long Five, that back line. Impressive, but it's not really an orthodox style, is it, at the front of the court? No, it's not, but that's the difference there. Tan put Shuttle on. Kiddo likes that. He's quick to react to pace. And Tan's been very disciplined so far, blocking Seven, Shuttle up in front of Kiddo and not giving him that pace to feed on. They just need to keep the concentration, keep the focus on their tactic. Long. Oh, that's a good rally. Lovely. He's got such vision, such awareness of where his opponents are on court, where the gaps are. Yeah, interesting though. I think Ku's not happy with the cross court there, turn around, wasn't happy with turn there. He's going to play more to the centre to keep him in that good position in the front court. Well, since the mid-game interval, we've played six points, and all six points have gone in favour of the Indonesians. Oh. I wonder what on earth the Indonesian coach said to them. Whatever it was, it's worked. Well, again, Tan there guilty of putting pace on the shuttle, and as soon as he does, Marcus Kiddo wakes up. Channel attack down the center of the courts. 11, Standard tactic in doubles narrows the angle of reply. A little more chance to the attacking shot comes back. And the net player to intercept. No, it's not the tallest of athletes. Marcus Kida, just 165, that's five foot five, but my goodness. It's great elevation on the jump. Look at that. What an angle. Back level. Just wide. But it's a very good spell for the Indonesians prior to that rally. They just won eight of the last nine points. Setuana were disappointed there. He read the play, read the, read the straight return from the Malaysians and missed the interception. Oh, that's a good smash from Kukian Kiat. A little more purpose, a little more urgency in his style of play in that rally. Goodness me, 163 miles per hour. This is a great return. Look at the deception. He actually changed the face of the racket. He was on his forehand side. He turned to the backhand grip and changed the direction of the shuttle at the last second. And that's landed on the line. Relentless in hunting the shuttle. The Malaysian pair, both of them so high in the court. 
Yes, and pushing forward, knowing that's where the key to this game is. And also the Indonesians getting deeper and deeper in their defensive stance. Yeah, they've driven off the net position there. Just wide. Complexion on this second game since that mid-game interval. Good call by the line judge. Once again, it's all level. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness. The trick shot, the round the back. His partner having 16, had to dive full length. Yeah, it wasn't a trick that time, Jill. I think that was more desperation. All out of position. things up they've been so successful so with the channel attack down the center of the court uh, I know you have to keep your opponents guessing but why on earth would he suddenly try and go down the line and miss by some considerable margin yeah, this is where Tan's improved it's a good serve and these days he's ready behind that to take advantage good play good four court play This is such a big point. Clever. Once again, perhaps the Indonesians guilty of forgetting that Tambun Hyong was a left-hander. But once again, it's great vision by Turnboon Hill to see the gap across court. Oh. It's now or never for the Indonesians. It's got to take a positive. It's the services with Setiawan. I'm sure he'll be looking to pounce on this third shot and get in early, but no, nope, they've driven past him. Good tactics. Oh, it's a great rally. And as soon as Hendra Setiawan gets forward to the net, he makes such an impact on the rally. Just one point the deficit. on that low serve. Apologises for hitting Setiawan on the head with the shuttle. So now two match points for the Malaysians. Second match point opportunity 
for the former champions. Oh, once again, it's well saved by Hindra Satyawan. This is a great shot. Oh, so early. 20 all. And we will require extra points in terms of a two-point winning margin. Oh, that's super. Oh, having saved two match points, the Olympic champions now have a game point. And the opportunity to send this quarter-final to a third and deciding game. Oh, my goodness. Desperately close. Well, it was the right option to try and take the attack with the block, but couldn't execute. Goodness, that must have been close to the back line. Oh, it was further in than I thought. Goodness me, I'm just getting too excited. Well, yeah, a second game point opportunity has come and gone. Or will it be third time lucky? Oh, goodness. Sigit Pamunkas out of his seat. Yeah, Co placement from Kiddo there. And slightly across the court. That centre position, but picking out the forehand defence of Coop. Point number three. trickled over and hit the top of the tape and went over the luck of the net cord with the Malaysians. Level once again. Followed by another neck cord. <laughs> Goodness me. That's a great return. He got into it early. Fourth game point now for Kido and City Olam. This time they convert. And we will indeed be treated to a third and deciding game. 25-23, having saved two match points at 18-20 down. And the Indonesians have levelled it at one game apiece. Oh, they certainly didn't look as if that was going to be the case at the mid-game interview. It is one game. You don't have to go there, you don't have to go I really thought that the game in until the, there was no way back for the Indonesians. For me, there was a momentum change there. We're going to see one incredible statistic here, Jill. That's two sets of world-class men's doubles without one flick service. I don't yeah. think I've ever seen that. That's incredible. Overhead winners, as you'd expect, in a prolonged setting situation. Very, very close. Not a lot to choose between the two pairs and the rest of it, but that top line is incredible to me. Particularly as in the past, Ku and Tan have had some success with the flick against Marcus Kiddo. That's a good point. Wow. Well, that started with 
too much of a, a sparkle. It's developed into an absolute thriller. <laughs> Court two, 20 seconds. Court two, 20 seconds. Oh, my goodness me. And we were worried at the start of this quarterfinal, Ian, that it really hadn't ignited this men's doubles. But what a thrilling end to that second game. And I can't help but wonder for the Malaysians uh, that memory of the Asian Games final where they had match points in the second game there. Final game. Missed match points here Level. in the second game. Two of them. Play. Can they put that out of their minds? Can they really restart? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of history Seven being over. repeated so far, but One, I just five. feel in the middle of that game they lost their focus. They've got, they were totally dominating the tactical play, blocking off, pace off from the rear court. Indonesians not enjoying that lack of pace on the shuttle. And just for two or three points, particularly Tan, just hit two or three dark drives and let the Indonesians into that game. And from then on, they just regained a little bit of confidence. But as we've seen in the last couple of tournaments, both these pairs are a little short on confidence at the moment. Nice, nice play from Sophia Wang. Two, uh, one. Downward push, very little pace on it, just making sure it got past Tan Boon Hyong. But that's something in the first game the Malaysians did so well. They didn't let Seti Yuan take that third shot after his service. And here, you know, they've just pushed that shuttle to the previous point and let him intercept. Three, two. Just wide. What a tremendous rally. Great judgment on the end because that was a fraction. Three, four. Yep, rally's just starting to get a bit longer, Jill, noticeably. Yes, I think with the Indonesians you talk about their lack of form in recent tournaments actually then winning the gold medal in the Asian Games was a big surprise they weren't really expected to do that in fact you really have to go back to 2008 for their best year where they won five titles a couple of titles for them last year amazing Grand Prix gold event and of course those Asian Games yes they Going through that tournament, they actually played themselves into form because they actually started off and didn't look good at all that in those Asian games, but it was a great final and a great Three. result. But they're a pair that do tend to pull out the, the big wins in the championship events. Just wide. Yes, and Six. also a pair that Three. don't always particularly start well. I remember the Olympic final dropped the opening game before coming back to beat the home players Kai Yun and Fu Hong Kong. Seven, three. Oh, showing signs, he's not as confident as, as you'd like to see him really. In that, normally so dominant in that four quarter and he's actually made quite a number of mistakes there this evening. Again, the Indonesians guilty of giving easy attacking opportunities to the Malaysians. Sam Sama. Four, eight. 
four straight points comes to an end. Yes, that's the sort of shot that Seppi won at his best would never miss. Just wide. And again, just a period of lack of intensity. See how low Kiddo's racket was. He hit the return, racket goes down. And it's too late for the next shot. Extraordinary. What a backhand kill. Five, ten. Techni technically, this looks spectacular because his racket's so low. Look where it starts. Look at his racket go down there. Bang. Yeah, we see new coaches. Wouldn't be happy with that. Happy with the end result, but not the technique. Oh, yes, he read that so early, did Kuki and Kiax move forward to the net before the shuttle had even been played. Look, is it going in there? Wonderful anticipation. Please change ends the Moses with a six-point advantage. Two coaches talking independently to the two Malaysian players. I know your style of coaching very much. You spoke to the players always as a pair, speaking to both of them at once. Yes, it's a team game. And what's even more interesting in this match, Rexy, at the end of the first game, he spoke to Tan, and now he's concentrating on Ku. It's not as if he's concentrating on one player throughout the whole match to follow it through. He's chopping and changing and Tankim Hurst just picking up the player that Rexy doesn't walk to. It's quite a, quite a strange style, I'd have to say. 11, 5. Play. So 11, 5. Yeah. Forced to live short by the quality of the return of serve. Six. Is it the same pattern, Jill? It's the Malaysians off to the quick start for the third time in this match. The Indonesians going to pull it back again. 251. Good from there. Going into that favoured net position. Very quick reactions. Dominating that position. Silver medalists at the World Championships last year, Ku and Tan. World Championships played in Paris, forced out to Kai Yun and Fu Hai Fang in a swelling final. Sansana, 13-7. You could smash across the defence in the game with some Kido in that very relaxed position. Yes, Racket not ready. That's the sort of thing that I think may be a little bit lazy on his defence. First flick surgery. Oh, second seven. half of the third game. Yeah, you know, good angle on the smash from Marcus Kido. Eight, Almost seemed to change his mind. What on earth was that? Or just a poor choice of shot. Yeah, this is a poor decision. That's no chance from there, particularly with Ku in front moving into that net position. Oh. Service over. 9 15. Another example how Marcus Kiddo's drifted in and out of this game. Another flick serve. Yeah. 
Nice, good change of pace, setting up the rally. And once again, it is a case of the Indonesians really do need to close this gap. Because time is running out for them. 2.58, that's his fastest smash of the day so far. There, and both of them looking to get into that net position. 16, and just showing 10. more aggressive intent at the moment than the Indonesian pair. Oh, that's good defence. Yes, drive the shuttle cross court to Kuki and Kiat. 17. Look 10. at that. And it's poetry in motion when Tan Boon Hyong goes up for that jump smash. Yeah, just too many uncharacteristic errors from the Indonesian pair tonight. Set themselves too big a task here again. Got off to too slow a start in this set and they've really got to do something spectacular to get back into this one. Simply cannot afford service errors. Uh, so far, adrift. <laughs> and an error that time with the attempted drop shot from Marcus Guido. And now nine match points for the former champions, Kuke and Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong. Remember, of course, they had two match points in the second game but failed to convert. <laughs> Another nine opportunities now. Yeah. Only needed the one in this third game. 21-11 in the decider. The Malaysian fans rejoice. Well, obviously very pleased with that performance. The Malaysians refound their focus. Having lost their concentration in the second game, due in part to the improved play, of course, of the Indonesians in the second game, but safely through to the semi-final. Puki and Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong in three games: 21-19, 23-25, in the deciding game. Bottom line says it all here, Jill. Unforced errors from the Indonesian pair. And able to maintain the intensity that they found in the second half of the second game. Drifted back into a slower style and just made too many errors there, really. I think there's real signs of a lack of confidence and maybe a lack of intensive practice from the Indonesian pair at the moment. Yes, and that may be because they're training independently of the national team. But their confirmation, they're through to the semi-final and they will play the winners of the two pairs there, Kai Yun and Fu Haifeng from China and Ko Sun Hyun and Yu Yong Sung. That match, of course, taking place later on on one of the adjoining courts.